Two particular things interest me. The first is introducing some form of moratorium into our legislation which would enable companies to obtain some protection from creditor enforcement without having to go into some form of formal insolvency process. Uh, the second relates to Hong Kong's unique position. It's part of China. The stock exchange here in our debt market is utilised by mainland businesses to raise finance. And of course going forward there will unfortunately be some mainland businesses which run into financial problems and what we need to find is some mechanism, some cross-border mechanism to facilitate restructuring and to ensure that there's recognition of Hong Kong court orders in mainland China and recognition in Hong Kong of mainland Chinese insolvency orders as well. So those are the particular areas that I'm inclined to focus on when I'm thinking about this and talking to people about it. Well, Hong Kong's got a lot of experience of restructuring the debt of mainland businesses which have listings in Hong Kong, but the debt that we've been restructuring is offshore debt. Of course, those mainland businesses will often have substantial onshore debt, domestic debt in the mainland. And what we think would be of assistance to the mainland is for there to be recognition protocols which uh, allow Hong Kong orders, both insolvency orders and orders restructuring debt as a result of sanction schemes of arrangement being recognised and becoming enforceable in the mainland. Uh, it's it's um, perhaps not appropriate to say that you're very optimistic about it because insolvency and restructuring necessarily is something that arises when businesses run into financial problems, so it sounds rather negative. Uh, however, that having been said, there will inevitably be significant financial problems experienced by many businesses in the mainland and already we, we've seen evidence of that and we've dealt with those kind of problems. So what we, what we need to do is to find ways of providing assistance to those mainland businesses and assisting both the development of, of Hong Kong's financial services sector in this area and also contributing constructively to the development of the mainland by providing facilities that they can utilise to help solve their problems, particularly until such time as they have their own processes established domestically. And we are having very helpful and meaningful discussions. We're talking, or rather the Department of Justice is talking, to mainland colleagues about protocols which hopefully will result in mutual recognition of both insolvency orders and also restructuring orders in the form of sanctioned schemes of arrangement. I hope that the conference is going to be of interest to the maximum number of people. We've adopted a, a different format to the ones that we normally find ourselves being invited to and attending. We're focusing more on the decision makers, both the, the men or women who make decisions to invest in distress situations and also judges who make decisions whether or not to sanction the kind of applications that we, we've come uh, come before our courts like schemes of arrangement. So we have people at the front end, the investment end, like Mark Lazary and uh, Rob Petty, who will be talking about their own experiences and their expectations, which should be very interesting. And then we will have uh, a panel of, of judges from different jurisdictions who work in this area, but jurisdictions which tend to have a connection with Hong Kong. So we have uh, Marty Glenn from New York, who's certainly looked at enforcement of schemes that I've sanctioned in Hong Kong. We've got uh, Nick Siegel from the Cayman Islands, and of course many listed companies in Hong Kong have been incorporated in the uh, Cayman Islands. We've got mainland Chinese judges who will be attending, um, Edith Abdullah, who will be known to many people from Singapore, and of course myself. So I would hope that people are going to find it a little bit uh, different and a little bit more interesting perhaps than coming and listening to practitioners talk about their own experiences, which of course they regularly do at conferences which are taking place annually.